I've just finished up filming a TV commercial, a pretty small scale shoot, and um, I wasn't planning upon recording a video for this, especially as I'd got into bringing along my Panasonic G6 that I would. But then I thought, why the hell not just record this on my cell phone? Because it actually, although it's going to be awful sounding, it'll make you appreciate like how awful sounding this location is. So we're recording this, and yeah, you can hear the rumble of that moving off in the background. Um, the, the wheels and the loading up the stock. Yeah, so, yeah, we're, we're in a hardware store that's open to the public and, and is currently, you know, stocked with staff. So it was very noisy. And plus, you know, you had music playing in the background at all time. I thought, that has just stopped just now, interestingly. But that is at least one thing I could control and I could ask them, the store manager, you know, doing your commercial here, can we, can we get that turned off? But, oh yeah, here's the music back again. And, um, but yeah, like, uh, yeah, but anything else we really didn't have any control over. Um, I mean, you know, there, there would just be staff coming in and walking whenever. I mean, we could go up and ask them afterwards, so could you just come back after this take or whatever. Or, um, but, you know, so we at least had that leeway we could ask them to stop, but it wasn't like we, we had complete areas of the store blocked off or anything. Besides, it's, uh, you know... It, somebody could be doing something halfway down the store and you'll still be hearing the noise here. And yeah, so it's looking at a noise source just now. <laughs> and where am I? Rambling on. Um, also, look up there, those tin corrugated roofs that are going to be so noisy. Actually, it's even worse just out here in the garden centre, those sort of uh, plasticky roofs up there. That, that's really loud when you hear the rain raining down on it. Um, but yeah, oh well. Um, yeah, because it was definitely a concern beforehand because we just had like a hurricane come through last night. It was really, really loud, the rain. But um, uh, yeah, we, we were lucky it was, wasn't too bad with the rain. Um, but yeah, anyway, whatever the, oh, of course you've got also customers coming through as well and talking and so forth. So yeah, fun. I oh, just sitting here, a little bit of the rain starting up. Not very light rain, it sounds like. Anyway, enough rambling on about what a fantastic location this is. Um, I'm going to talk about what my setup was that I felt was really the best way to sort of attack this and uh, get a result that I was happy with um, in between all this noise. So I've got my setup here with a Zoom F810. I'm still using using that. A lot is my main one on like important shoots, even though I have started using my Zaxcom Max on some small like low key stuff. Um, just because, yeah, if it's, it's a really important shoot for me, I'm going to do something that I know really well. I've been using Zoom F series for years now. Um, but yeah, probably just a few more shoots with the Zaxcom Max, and then I might look, sort of replace that and make that be my main recorder I just use all the time. I am doing a short film with the Zaxcom Max um, this weekend. So that'll be the first, uh, first like, narrative film I'll be getting it on. Um, anyway, so yeah, what, what's the setup I've got here? Uh, I've got the, the Zoom F18 here inside the Orca Aura 30 bag, and I've got um, just on its SR here, and I had, on the talent we'd only had one guy speaking, so, you know, at least from uh, one aspect of the audio, it's pretty simple, it was just the location that was a pain, and, you know, most of the shots were pretty, pretty close up, we did have a couple of wide shots, um, but yeah, I just run in the lab on him more times for those times when it's needed or just as a extra backup. So I've got a just something like the SM, SMQV here. Um, and that's being received by the, the SR. Um, and that's being powered by this uh, BPU60 battery here. It's the same battery as like the popular FS7 and the FS5 and older ones like the Sony X1, X3. All yeah, they run on the, these BPU60 batteries or BP30 or BP90 and uh, yeah you got a check light so you can see it's about half full still but of course um, you've also got on the F18 you can see the voltage level so it's like oh just just switching between 13.7 13.6 and so yeah that's powering the whole bag it's powering the little Sonics SR it's also powering the Cedar DNS2 so I basically got a trio of things that I felt helped make the most of this tricky location to put it diplomatically I've got here my Sankin CS3E that I just feel like out of all mics, it really sort of like cuts through um, the, the background ambience the best to sort of suck up um, the dialogue. I mean, I've got a few other mics that I've brought along with me, like I've got a Sankin CS1 
A here, which is kind of similar, but a little bit wider pickup pattern. At, um, and I've got like a, an AKG CK63 and Audio Technica 4071. And, oh, yeah, I've got like my, um, yeah, I've got a blimp here ready to go, but that's got a, M a Sennheiser MKH60 in it. So, anyway, yeah, I've got a few different choices I had. But yeah, I felt like when I was here, I'd go with that one. And I have actually recorded in a minor 10s before as well. I, I did another minor 10 commercial shoot here. Oh, not this minor 10, but a different one up north uh, some months ago. Um, yeah, so I kind of knew what I was going to be in for. Um, what was I saying? So yeah, the trio of things to like attack this with um, that I really felt were good was that, plus my Cedar DNS2 noise reduction, and also uh, my remote audio headphones. No, not these headphones, other headphones. Where are they gone? Ah, here they are. These ones. <laughs> Anyway, I'll go through step by step. So I already talked a bit about the Sankin CS3E. Uh, and then we've got up here the Cedar DNS2. Um, so you can see here I've got running through it. Hello, we can talk and... Have I got this hooked up at the moment? I should... Wait, I'll uh, do them plug that. So I was just starting to uh, pack down. Um, anyway, so yeah, you can like... Enable or unenable, you can sort of see it's active learning or not, and it's a power button. And you can also link these up too. Um, so I have found this handy. I might link it up. So we're, so we're just, there's different ways you can link it up. So one way I've done it before is like when I didn't have like a, because like you can set, you've got like four different outputs, but I only had like one output cable with me once. And I, so I looped it through here, and then I looped one, one, so I set the two outputs so it's exactly the same as each other. So one went back into the recorder to be recorded, and then another one just going out to the um, camera for it to have a scratch track too. So anyway, yeah, it's useful, uh, useful features so you can look it up in different ways. Um, what was I going to say? Uh, so yeah, so ZDNS2, there's, there's, there's really nothing else quite like it. It, it, is, it is like an active noise um, reduction sort of done live. So there's all of these kind of really good post plugins you can get software like bus away isotope rx6 and rx7 has come out like a little while back um what other ones and like some of them have got it built in so if you're using reaper or audition or whatever you know lots of these ones have sort of built in options to do a bit of noise reduction with and um, yeah they each have their different strengths so you know cedar's like very popular on the high end for for like broad um Attacks and, and then, then you know, uh, I set up RX7, maybe a bit more surgical, less sort of noise reduction, um, cutting out bits and pieces. Anyway, blah, rambling on about that. Um, so, where's it going? So, th we've, we've, um, th th this is pretty much the only thing in the world that is like small enough to be in your bag and, and be able to do like live noise reduction. There are a few other live noise reduction hardware pieces out there that are not like purely software based. But those other hardware ones like rack mounted or mains powered or other stuff. But this one, you can power it um, off, off you know, your DC power supply. So for here, for instance, the BPU60, I've got it um, onto this uh, sort of battery shoe. And this here, this high-rise cable output, loops down into my battery distribution over here, which is a, a battery bud one, I think it's from memory. What was it? Let's double check what the... Yeah, it's a battery bud from Cable Techniques, battery bud 2. And um, so yeah, I've, I've got, uh, yeah, I'm powered in, there's got lots of different outputs here. So at the moment, there's only two of them being used for the receiver and the recorder. But when I've got more receivers, those also all get powered from the battery distribution. Um, but yeah, I've also got a cable here that's out of the D-tap from this. And then I've got like a, f uh, is it a 5-pin XLR power into here? And so yeah, that then powers this, and um, yeah. Um, although yeah, normally I keep this, the, the the battery up in my side pocket, but I've realised to like fit this in, I'm going to have to re it slightly. So I moved it into the internal pocket, and that fits in side pocket. And then I'm sort of running the cables looping through it, so really unzip and get the stuff through. It's a bit of a yeah, tricky. That's fine. Um, oh yeah, so I wanted the last of the three things being there. Um, yeah, these remote audio um, headphones. So, so uh, what I normally would use though is the Sennheiser. Oh no, sorry, the Sony, the Sony, um, Sony MDR. 
7506. So yeah, these ones. Um, yeah, they're very popular. They might even be the most popular sort of choice of headphones for location sounds. You know, them and a couple of others are probably the most common choices you'll see around. And so what this company, Remote Audio, has done, they're basically a company who sort of specializes in, in making um, sort of specialized niche products for location sound folks like ourselves, is um, they've gone and taken the headphone drivers out of those Sonys and put them into these. And that's why they've both got the, the number 7506 on them. And so, um, but what they've built them inside are like these big beefy... Um, sort of air protection units with sort of gel filled pads here. The ones I originally, because I picked this up second hand, originally the pads were gone. I sort of replaced, put some replacement pads on it, identical to the originals. And um, yeah, these are like the same kind of hearing protection that, like, um, I don't know, people on a runway who are like guiding planes that are landing would wear. Like, they're really heavy duty noise protection. And so they just just put inside them the drivers I, I thought from the headphones of the um, the Sony MDRs 7506. So you're sort of hearing a similar sound that you're used to, but just with like the best best possible passive um, noise isolation you could possibly get. Because you really want it to be passive. You don't want active noise noise um, isolation. So you know there are all those um, there are all those. Ones that are, you know, the noise cancelling ones that you might buy from sort of consumer electronic stores. You know, perhaps if you are wanting to, you know, fly on a plane and and not with the background noise of the plane, or you often commute on a train or something, then yeah, you'd really want to, yeah, have something like that. They're very popular. Lots of people would have those. But if you're listening to what you're recording. You don't want to, that be, to be messed up with what you're recording. You don't want to be having noises around you subtracted from that. You really want to know accurately what it is that you are recording. And so, um, yeah, uh, active noise, noise, active noise cancelling ones like that are like a really bad idea because it's not going to give you a truly accurate idea of what's being recorded. Um, so you're going to want to go for passive ones um, like, like these. Um, yeah, uh, so... Yeah, so basically, you, I loop this through, and you can see here what I'm what I'm recording. Sort of get this on right. I've got a track there that's labelled Cedar DNS2, the boom track. Um, so that's basically with the, with, with the noise reduction that applied. I've got a track up here which says Sanken CSVE, that's a boom, and I've got the uh, lav track. Um, I've also got actually a, a fourth track here, but I'm not actually like monitoring that one because I, I, I don't I'm mean, not visually monitoring it because I know it's just I'm just recording it at a much lower level I, I don't need to know the details of it because it's just it's just one but at a lower level it's just a safety track so if I, I scroll through different options you can see here now it's showing track five is uh, saying can CSVE safety but uh, I don't I just I'd rather have the bigger the, the big bigger screen here so I can see what's happening with the track rather than one of the small ones so that's that's a view I prefer. Um, but yeah, depends on what I'm doing, it's what view. Um, so yeah, okay, that's, uh, that's pretty much everything. I've also, my other output, because I've got one output looping through here, um, one, I've got another output that's going into this uh, Sony transmitter here. And I've got that like 100 megahertz or so. Wait, not so, what am I saying? 100, oh yeah, 100. Yeah, 100 megahertz away or so from from what my um, SMQV is on. So here we go. Yeah. Um, and so yeah, uh, yeah, I've got it. So they're quite far because you do want you do want your uh, receivers and transmitters when they're together in the bag, not to be too close to each other. Otherwise, it would reduce the sensitivity of of your receivers if you're if what you're transmitting is too close nearby. So yeah, this is about 100 megahertz away or so, and I am, which is plenty yep, I'm sending it over to this one, which is what I put on the Sony FS7 that was being shot with, um, just to like give it another uh, reference to sync up, because yeah, Sony FS7s don't have time code inputs unless you have got the back for it, the XCCA back, but it didn't. And I also had a couple of these, um, that these sort of um, sort of I guess 
Comtechs or IFBs or IMEs, whatever you want to call them. I guess this is an IME. Um, yeah, just for, I got I had two of these with me, one for the client, one for the director to listen to. And um, and also the, the headphones I also gave as well. Oh, here we go, two of them, see? One, two. I mean, I've, I've got more at home, but I only bought a couple to this today. And um, yeah, they look very much like, uh, they look very much like sort of the G3s. Um, and I've got a little headphone knob here on the top and just sort of plug in the headphones into there. You can turn it on, here it is on. See, and then you can turn it off. And which is much better than my previous way of which I would just, I'm sort of a low budget short film, whatever, I would just simply give to um, the, direct, the director or script supervisor, whatever, one of my Sony receivers and just have them plug into the headphones. But then I've got to change like the volume here with this, diving into, diving into that, that's just a real pain. Um, so yeah, that's, that's much easier. Oh, and here's, here's, a head, here's a headphone I like gave the director. They're like, what they're called, ISK or ISK here. Um, yeah, it's, uh, yeah, they're cheap. Um, in fact, actually, the cameraman <laughs> saw the director, like, dot the headphones um, while we were shooting. At one point, it's kind of like, oh, I hope you gave her, yeah, cheap headphones. Yes, yes, I did. Um, okay, rambling on. Oh, I might as well make the last, last point about this setup, which is the fact that... Look, I'm sending this Sony, um, it was attached to the camera with that scratch audio, and that was being sent from this Sony transmitter. Da da! Sent it at line level. But what was being sent to this? Well, actually, these are all on the same frequency that's set to, so yeah, it's fine. Uh, yeah, they, they, they work together. Because I mean, I do have that sort of like half whack unit size transmitter for this, which I'm going to sort of be playing around with. But yeah, but obviously if we're in a bag, I mean, where would I put it? How would I power it? Um, it would be doable, I guess, if I got like, if you used one of my other bigger bags. But yeah, this is obviously just such a neater situation. It works much better and it's just the same thing that's being sent to camera as well. So yeah, I'm, I'm actually pretty happy with how these are. Mostly, for the most part. I mean, I did get like this little side part break off that sort of holds it closed, but this side is still here. But yeah, very minor issue, not a big deal. Um, what else can I say? Oh, yeah, check out my sound cart. Sound trolley, really. I mean, we're at Bunnings. I mean, sorry, whoops, might have 10, I mean. So yeah, rather than like lugging around all this extra weight on my back, why not just carry it in the trolley? Yay! Much easier for my back in life. Oh yeah, and I have a C stand here. Not that I, I mean, I used it a little bit, but yeah, didn't need need it. But it's always handy to have it around here as an extra bonus. And uh, man, rambling on for like nearly 20 minutes. Let's cut this short and say, uh, yeah, that's it. Any any more questions people might have about my setup here? Just feel free to ask. I feel pretty happy about how it really went through. Um, cause yeah, it just sort of, it, it just, I reckon it really helped me sort of know like what was acceptable and, and what we could get away with and when I might want to ask for another take. So if some, there was some like background chatter warbling on in the background, it's like, man, I just will listen to track two and be like, nah, don't hear anything. Like with the, the noise reduction, just done, it's gone, it's gone. But if I was listening to like my boom, I might just hear like the small faint of a bit back in the background, it'd be annoying me. And yeah, and just with those headphones, it just really made me very confident that what I was hearing was what was actually being recorded. And I wasn't perhaps hearing something else leaking through that wasn't actually actually impacting the tracks. Um, but yeah, but then if I would hear something like somebody just dropping these nails on, on that desk over there behind us, and you really hear that like cut through and the noise reduction like didn't, didn't really... Uh, yeah, it didn't really reduce it, it was just there and like hitting you in your face and like, no, I want to ask for another take for that. Um, anyway, yes, over, over and out, over and out, we're just about to hit 20 minutes, no, stop!